you back to Kumasi, uh, where the Commission of Inquiry is looking into the Adura killings. And uh, currently, my colleague Arasta Sasari Donko is testifying before it. <laughs> Hi, Erastus Asari, don't call. Do swear. Do swear. By the Almighty God. By the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. To this committee. To this committee. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. Nothing by the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Please, if you could take off the mask since at least there's nobody really around you so that you can hear you well. Okay, please give your full name again to the committee. Erastus Asari, Donko. Please, where do you work? I work as a broadcast journalist with the multimedia group limited in Kumasi. In Kumasi. Okay. And can you tell the committee what exactly you do there? What's your position? What job you do exactly? I started with multimedia in 2012. No. What is your position? What role do you play? So I'm a broadcast journalist and my duty include uh, field reporting and also producing documentaries and features. Okay. So, in recent times, as part of your work, have you had any coverage of any news item in the town of Ejira in Ashanti? Yes, my lord. If so, can you tell the committee when this was and what? led you there for the coverage? My Lord, on the morning of 29th May. May? 29th May. Okay. 2021. I was assigned together with my team, a camera technician and my driver, to... For, for me to be extra sure, we are in July now. Are you saying 29th May? Yeah, 29th May. May, all right, continue. My lord, um, I think it's July, rather. 29th July. June. June, June rather. Thank you. June. <laughs> so we were assigned to go to Edra to cover protests in the wake of the death of a social media activist, popularly called Kaka. So we left here around 8 a.m. in the morning and we reached the scene, that's the street of Edra, at about 10 minutes past 10 in the morning. Please, can you, for clarity's sake, can you tell us how many persons you went with, if you know their names, if you give it? So we were three. The driver included, that will be four. 
the driver included, that would be four. So myself, Erastus Asaridonko, my camera technician, Kofi Asari. Kofi Asari. And Nuruddin Mohammed, who is a colleague reporter. And the driver's name is Peter Zika. Peter Zika. You can go on, please. My Lord, we reached Ejra at about 10 minutes past 10. When we got to the main street, we were met by angry protesters numbering over 600 when they saw us they told us not to raise our cameras They indicated they were unhappy because Sorry, sir. before you proceed, you said when they saw you, they told you not to They told us not to raise our cameras Raise the yes, camera like, uh, begin Not to, to record Yes, not to record And the reason, my Lord, was that when their brother was killed, we were not there to broadcast events leading to his death. So some of them started using their hands to bang on our vehicle. But after my colleague Nuruddin Mohammed And one of the protesters at the time, who is now deceased, my Lord, Nasir Yusuf, spoke to them in Hausa, they calmed down. So Nasser Yusuf formed a ring around us so we could perform our duties. May I ask you, was Nasser the only person who kind of uh, to try to protect you because I'm wondering how him alone could form a ring. So was he the only person or? In fact, there were two. Two persons. My lord. Okay. Right. I, 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 has, the other person's name do not readily come to mind. 
but he was very active following us wherever we went. So they now allowed us to film the demonstration. My Lord, some of them were holding sticks. If you say some of them, the them, who are you referring to? I'm referring to the demonstrators, my Lord. Some of them were holding sticks, knives, machetes. Um, choice of words, uh, very important. Were they holding sticks or wielding sticks? Some were holding the sticks and some were waving them like that. So they were wielding sticks? They were welding, yes, my lord. And some of them were also angrily chanting their grievances and their anger at the death of Kaka. May I ask you, please? Did you perchance get to know what? your colleague um, told them in Hausa that, that made them calm down. Nuruddin told them that made them calm down. That allowed them to now, yes, made them allow you to film now. When earlier on they had said they wouldn't. He told me that they told them we are here to do our job and that we are here for them to listen to them and broadcast their feelings to authorities. Thank you. You can continue. Initially, when we started filming again, uh, there were more angry youth coming towards us. And so, Nasir Yusuf, who is now deceased, directed us on which way to go. At a point, we, he directed us towards some tall buildings where we could film from. And then at a point when he saw we could film from the ground, he brought us back to the street. So we walked and filmed with the demonstrators. At a point in time, we will run ahead of them and film. And then wait till they catch up with us.
at a point there was a makeshift structure painted in NPP colors and paraphernalia. They started attacking the structure with the sticks and machetes. And finally brought it down. After that, we moved some few meters from that spot. And myself, my camera team, and Nasir moved forward to film the demonstrators. Then we saw the police water cannon vehicle approaching. Closely behind it was a military pickup with the inscription Operation COVID. Operation COVID. Please can I ask, before you saw this police water cannon vehicle, since there was a protest going on, had you seen any policeman earlier before you saw the water cannon? No, my lord, there was no policeman or woman on the streets throughout the demonstration. What about any army personnel? No, my lord. Okay. You can continue, please. My Lord, we saw four armed military men in uniform step out of the military pickup. Come again, my lord. You first saw one following op uh, with the inscription Operation COVID. That's the same pickup, my lord. So, four armed military men stepped out of the pickup and then formed a line and started firing into the air. Say anything prior to firing these shots? My Lord, if they said anything, I wouldn't have heard them because of the distance. The firing was into the air? Yes, my lord. The firing, my lord, went on for about a minute into the air. And then the firing seemed to be coming down, being lowered. Mm 
please, can you, can you explain that or can you demonstrate that? Into the air, then which angle again? So initially, we saw them when they stepped out of the vehicle, they started shooting at this range. Then it came something like this. About the angle of the fire. Yes, the angle I thought of... you were talking about the intensity. You see, uh, the shots were into the air, then you said uh, it started coming down. So I thought uh, you were referring to the intensity of the firing. Uh, my Lord, I'm referring to the angle at which they were. Shooting. Very well, thank you. At this point, I told my camera technician and Nasir Yusuf, who was behind us, to move to higher ground. So we started running. My Lord, whilst we were running, my camera technician was still filming. So we climbed an uncompleted one-story structure. So please, be, be, apart from you and your crew, was anybody else running, other members of the public? Yes, my lord. Soon as the military men started firing, the crowd started retreating. My Lord, whilst up there, my camera technician was filming and I was running commentary behind the filming. My Lord, now the firing became more intense. We saw three additional men in military uniforms joined them and started firing as well. Do you know how they got there? Was it another pickup? Was it a truck? How did they arrive at the scene? My, my Lord, I could not see it clearly, but it looks like another vehicle pulled up behind the military pickup and I did not see that clearly, whether they got out of that vehicle or another vehicle. There was quite a distance. Come again, my Lord. But you were sure there were three? My Lord, I'm sure. I saw them. You can go on. So the firing got more intense. then you could hear the bullet sound all around you from where we were. By this time, the demonstrators were running in all directions.
just some uh, beneath the building on the street. There is a street in front of the building. That's where all the action was happening. We saw one person in uh, white t-shirts and black trousers get hit by the bullet. My Lord, he fell to the ground and his colleagues who were running came back to pick him up. My Lord, you could, we could see the hesitation because bullets were still flying, they were still firing. So at the point they tried to pick him up and they stopped. They wanted to run, they came back to pick him up again. Then they dragged him on the ground for a while and then one of them picked him up and put him on his shoulders and started running. My Lord, all this time the firing was going on. Then from where we where we we saw the people and heard the people shouting that another person has been hit. That was my Lord just beneath the building, closer to where we were. We, we could only see the pool of blood on the streets, plenty of it. At this point, my Lord, the crowd had dispersed to and separated on both sides of the street. There was one to my left very far away and the other to my uh, right very far away and the military were in the middle. My Lord, just to go back a bit, when the firing was going on, at a point you could see the armed military men, some of them get down on their knees in shooting position and fire at the crowd. My Lord, most of this was captured by our cameras. My Lord, at this point, the crowd were concentrated on the victims on the ground. We saw the military retreat, the vehicles turned around, they boarded it and left the scene.
My Lord, we came down from the building and went directly onto the street. And at this point, we were able to capture the blood on the streets of the second person who got shot. Can you, can you estimate, in, in your view, how long this shooting went on for? My Lord, I can hazard a guess. It will be about between 20 and 30 minutes. Did you also get to know the two persons, the names of the two persons that you saw being shot? My Lord, later I learned it was Muntala Muhammad. A 26-year-old farmer. And Nasir Yusuf, 25 year old farmer. And we learned, my Lord, he was the young man who was trying to protect us. So can you tell the committee at what point this Nasser who was with you all along left you and your crew? My Lord, it was when I signaled to the team, I told them that we should move to higher ground. At the point, I thought he was following us. He followed us up to the base of the building. It was later when we got up there that I found out he went straight beneath the building. Instead of following us. you can continue so when we came back to the streets we were shown where Nasir Yusuf was struck by the bullet My Lord, it was on the street, just beneath the building on which we were filming from. So, when the two army vehicles, or one that you saw, the second one you are not too sure, when the Two sets of army personnel, first four, second three, came along. Can you tell the committee at that point where the police water cannon vehicle was, whether it was still around or whether it has gone? My Lord, the water, police water cannon vehicle was still with them. It was moving ahead of them on the side. So the street was divided into two. The water cannon was on the left side, moving ahead of them, and they were on the right side. Fire.
Please continue if you can. My Lord, when we saw the pool of blood, you, we were shown when he was struck and fell, where he fell, you could see the blood flow over to uh, 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 towards the end of the building and we're told he was rolling trying to get up but he couldn't My Lord, we also saw a few meters from the building from where we were filming. There was a, an elect, electricity transformer. Hanging mid-air. which has been struck by the bullets and it was leaking fuel. My Lord, from this time we saw the Some chiefs from the Adra Palace in black cloth coming to the scene where the bodies were. My Lord, they told us they've been sent by the Adra chief. to inspect what was happening on the streets. My Lord, they told us they did not invite the military to shoot at the citizens. but they invited them to maintain peace. At this time, the crowd was moving towards the Ejra Government Hospital. We followed up to the hospital. My Lord, at the accident and emergency unit. There were two bodies. One was on a stretcher covered with cloth. And one was on the floor also covered with cloth. We later, they were later identified as Nasir Yusuf and Muntala Muhammad.
And Lord, there, we also saw two people who were groaning in pain. One was being treated on the floor. And the other one was on a stretcher. There were other women who we were told by the medical superintendent had fainted upon seeing their relatives who died and had also been admitted. My Lord, later the youth and the families demanded the bodies for burial. There was a bit of pandemonium around the accident and emergency unit with some of them forcing their way in. And so the doctors could not even find space to work on the injured. So after banging on the doors and demanding the bodies, the medical superintendent finally agreed to their request. My Lord, it was when the bodies were released that a large chunk of the crowd followed them home. So gradually the place eased up and calm was restored. My Lord, the events that followed were that of preparation of the bodies and subsequent Muslim rituals and burial. From, from your narration, I suppose that the bodies were take, uh, when the bodies were taken away, you were still at the hospital, or do you yes, follow them? Yes, my Lord. Okay, so, but do you, did you get to know where this preparation of the bodies was done? Were you there physically or you, you, were, you, were, you were informed? My Lord, we were shuttling between uh, the homes of the bereaved families and the hospital. So at a point, we'll go over to the bereaved families and then capture what is going on there. Then we'll come back to the hospital and still monitor how things were going with the injured. Can you tell the committee around what time this was? You have told us when you went, when you go to the town. Can you tell us around what time, uh, when the bodies were taken away, around what time it was? 
My Lord, if I can recall correctly, it was around midday, getting to 1 p.m. when the bodies, the first body was released to the families. And then it took about 40 minutes before the second body was also released to the families. Did you get to know whether post-mortem was conducted on any of the bodies? In fact, I spoke, I interviewed the medical superintendent. One, Dr. Mensa Mayer. And he told me, I, w I asked a question uh, relative to why the boys were agitating at the uh, frontage of the accident and emergency center. And he told me that he couldn't just release the bodies to the families. They must go through a certain protocol. But there was no security at that point to also give him cover. And the way the youth were forcing themselves into the facility, there was nothing he could do than to call the police. But when he called the police, they told him, in his own words, that they couldn't come to the hospital at that time. So he said he had no option than to release the bodies. So the question still remains, was there post-mortem conducted? No, if my lord. Right. Thank you. So you can go. My lord, the following day, we, around 10 a.m., we saw the police water cannon leading the park. And I think about two military pickups full of armed men. A police van and a police pickup truck all full of armed policemen patrolling the streets of Ajra. Please, can I, can I confirm? Did you say the following day? Yes, my lord. Okay, so did you come to Kumasi and went back, or you stayed? My lord, we stayed. Okay. And how safe was it staying overnight in the town? Was it safe? How my would you describe it? My Lord, it wasn't safe. And so we had to improvise and also look at our safety. As to if you could explain better, did you get some persons in the town guarding you or how? How were you protected? Since you were strangers, let me put that way, strangers in the town at that time. My Lord, we moved from the town to a different location to sleep. And then we came at dawn. We came back at dawn. You can, you can continue the next day, yes. The following day, yes. What happened? Uh, come again, my lord. You, you, you said the following day. Earlier on, we did not hear you saying the following day. So you said the following day. Yes, the following day. Yes, okay. Please continue. My lord, so the following day was very calm and uh, peaceful. We had various dignitaries visiting the families. We also heard of meetings between the chief and 
traditional and religious leaders, urging the uh, youth to calm down. A lot that will be all. Thank you very much. But uh, since you said you went there with your cameraman, obviously you may have taken some videos or pictures. Do you have any such evidence to produce to the committee? Yes, my lord. Uh, we were filming with live equipment. And so all that was happening was live on Joy News and all our multimedia platforms. We have uh, submitted, my lord, a copy of uh, the footage to the clerk to be submitted to you. Is it a video recording? Is it a video coverage? Is it yeah. a video footage? Yeah, the video, video coverage. Footage. Okay. So Let's mark, mark it as exhibit B. That is the second exhibit. Mark it as exhibit B. We will play it for, yes, before we ask any questions. So, so can you confirm what day this video footage was taken. My Lord, we started filming from when we got there during the demonstration. When the youth were coming from the cemetery, we lent. Did I read the 29th? On the 29th, 29th. my Lord. So we started you... filming from there right until when the military came in. Right through when we were running up there and the shooting. My Lord, the third footage, because we didn't want to incur any problems, we, it's already been handed over. So if... B. Yes, Lord. We are going to play it. Then uh, if we need any clarification, we will ask you to clarify. Yes, my Lord. The committee members will like to ask you some questions for clarification and other answers. Yes, my lord. Rastus, just a few questions and a few clarifications. You did the filming yourself, not yourself. I mean, your team did the filming. It's not a film from somebody else, right? My lord, it's not very clear. I was asking whether this film is an authentic film from you and your team and that no other ones have been added or subtracted. No, my lord. No other ones have been added. This is from so our... So, it is not doctored? No, my lord. It's not edited? No, my lord. When we finish the film, we may ask further questions. Yes, my lord. Rastus, thank you, and um, I, I suppose my question is just to ask if this is the first time that you've covered a riot in your career. No, my lord. This is not the first time. Did you find anything different about this particular one when you first got to the scene? Yes, my lord. My lord, the difference covering the riots at Tafu and there was a clash between Muslim youth and the indigenous of Tafu. What is different is that the military at that, at that time were more tolerant. In fact, they used um, other uh, tear gas and other things to disperse them. They fired warning shots, but nobody was shot. But with this one, you could see 
the military men aiming directly at the crowd and shooting. At the point in time, you could see them kneeling and taking aim directly at the crowd and firing. Mm. That is the difference, my Lord. I see. Now, the water cannons that you mentioned, were they used at any time at all? My Lord, the only time I saw it um, spewing water was after the warning shots. It was very momentary. It was just a few seconds. It, it poured water onto the streets. It did not even uh, reach the demonstrators. And the demonstrators moved back or they were still where they were? My Lord, there was quite a distance between where the water cannon was and where the demonstrators were. And so the water had been fell short of even touching any of the demonstrators. I see. Okay, thank you. Yes, Erastus, you said uh, some chiefs later came to the scene and uh, they told I'm using you, not to you personally, but that you said they told us that they did not invite the police to shoot at the demonstrators, but they were there to protect the yes, people. Yes, my Lord. Yes. Did you understand them to mean that they invited the military to come to the scene during the demonstration? That was the uh, inclination I got. That was how you that, that understood That was it. how I understood it, my Lord. That they invited them to come. Yes, my Lord. But my Lord, later when the same chief came to the hospital, I wanted to be sure. So I asked him the direct question, that did they invite the military personnel. No, my lord, the question was who invited the military personnel? And then he replied that definitely is MUSEC, which is the Municipal Security Council. Okay. The first time that you went there and uh, you said the demonstrators approached your team but for Nasiru who spoke to them and uh, Nuruddin, did you feel threatened? Yes, my Lord, I felt threatened, but um, I could also sense that they were angry, and that was not the first time. Normally, protesters are angry, but if you remain calm and try to talk to them, they understand you and they calm down. Thank you. We will proceed to watch the video clip. Then any other questions that may arise, we will ask you. Yes, my Lord.
Yes, Erasmus, I believe uh, this is uh, what Joy FM should. Yes, my lord. Do you have the original that you recorded? Yes, my lord. We've added the whole package uh, to the folder together with what went live. So what we were showing was the live scenes, but we copies, unedited copies. Why didn't you show that one? That is why we are here. If it is even two hours, we have to watch it. Because uh, it should not be a matter for the committee members only to sit in our office and look at it. We need to ask questions. And uh, if we are given only glimpses of what happened, how can we interrogate and ask you questions? You understand? Yes, ma'am. Because what I have seen here is a different narration of all the evidence you've given to us. Because if from the time you went, you started filming, it means a lot of the evidence that you have testified in this, before this committee, is not captured by what has been shown to us. My Lord, we have given all the videos, the raw videos to... Yes, that is what I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because uh, you spoke about another vehicle coming and what I saw, the second vehicle had police officers, not military officers. You, you understand? Yes, my Lord. And uh, you talked about uh, the, the demonstrators trying to attack you people. It is not captured there. We saw this man who you were interrogating. Or, uh, uh, my Lord, uh, that will not be captured because they asked us not to film. And so that uh, altercation uh, happened before they allowed us to now film. It was after they calmed them down, then we started filming. So we don't have that footage. Very well. Please. But in any case, Erastus, what the chairman is saying is very um, important. Because the authentic film, that's why I asked whether it was not doctored or reduced to anything. We need it because if there is somebody whom we can identify, maybe for punishment or some recommendation, it might come from the film. Yes, and it right. must tie in with your narration, the sequence of your narration. So do not think we are asking for more. What we, we are here for a business. And I must commend you for, for the bravery and what you have given this country. But we must have the fullness of what your bravery has shown. Before we can commend you, maybe you, you are here to embellish something. Maybe you are here also to... So we want to see the full, all right? Yes, my Lord. My Lord, we've given all the videos to uh, the clerk. So, in your estimation, how many military officers were at the scene? My Lord, I saw seven. The gentleman in the video you were interviewing or interrogating, did you get to know his name or his identity? No, my Lord. So, there is no way you can assist us to get in touch with him for him to come and testify? My Lord, there is a way. Um, he, after the whole incident, we saw him uh, with a couple of uh, people we knew, so we could contact them. Yes, we just want the evidence and the truth to be arrived at for us to make the appropriate recommendation. So if you can get in touch with any person who knows him, so that we can extend the invitation to him for him to come and assist us. Yes, we, my Lord. We will be very grateful to you. Yes, let me find out from you. From the video clip that we watched, 
it has been tagged, uh, fixed, the nation, whatever. How do you relate the fix the nation agenda to what happened in Asia? My Lord, if I understand your question, it means the fix the country campaign. Um, my Lord, initially, what we learned was that the uh, uh, Kaka, the person who, whose uh, death caused this protest, was a member of the Fix the Country campaign. We have not been able to independently verify that. But what we know is that uh, he, he was campaigning and he was a social media advocate. In fact, the family showed us some of his videos. He took some of the videos while standing close to uncompleted projects, um, bad roads, and then he will make, uh, he will add a narration to the video and then post it on social media. Um, if that is what the campaigners tag as a member, then I don't know, because I don't know what the modalities are for somebody to be a member of uh, that campaign group. Thank you. But uh, you see, you did not take steps to ascertain whether he was indeed a member of the Fix the Country campaign, whatever. But in the video that we watched, Joy has tagged it. Uh, wait. No. Go back where you will see the. You see, there is, a, there is a portion where they have uh, written something. Yes, we are all caca. Police arrest two suspects involved in attack of hashtag fix the country campaigner. You understand? But this is a uh, matter you are now telling us that you did not take steps to ascertain whether, in fact, he, Kaka was a member of the Fix the Country campaign group. So why should your outfit in this uh, particular clip indicate there that some two persons have been arrested in connection with the murder of uh, Kaka, a member of the uh, hashtag fix the country campaign. My Lord, that was the uh, tag, the tagline for uh, Kaka and what he was doing. And in fact, the fix the country campaigners uh, came out with a release indicating that he was a member and that, that was the job he was doing. Um, later on, when we went to Ejra, his family, some of his family members indicated he wasn't a member. Some said he was a member. So uh, there is that uh, confusion as to whether he was a member, he's not a member. But what he did and what he was doing on social media and on his pages is similar to uh, what the Fix the Country campaigners are doing. Are you trying to say that any Ghanaian who decides to criticize authority in respect of whatever is not going on well in the country, automatically becomes a member of that campaign group. My, my Lord, I'm, I'm not a member of the Fix the Country campaigners, and uh, I'm sorry, but I, I, don't, I don't know the modalities to be a member, and, and so I cannot speak to that. Yes. My worry is that, uh, you know, Joy carries a lot of weight in terms of the news they put out there. It has a lot of weight. A lot of people 
listen to joy or the multimedia group and they get convinced about whatever they see or hear from multimedia. My worry is why if you people were not so certain about the fact that the man was a member of a Fix the Country campaign group. Why do you put that hashtag? Yes, it is true that the man has been killed. It can be for any other reason. It can be for any other reason. Knowing that you do not have the, all the evidence to be so convinced that he was killed because of his membership of uh, hashtag fake the country campaign group. Why didn't you advise your people not to? You see, because you were showing it light, and they decided to put that hashtag there. My Lord, um, uh, I was a reporter on the field at the time, and the slugs and other things put on the videos will not be visible to me whilst I was reporting. And uh, the uh, tags we give to stories uh, goes through a series of editorial uh, uh, scrutiny, which I'm not aware of at that particular time when I was reporting. So I wouldn't be able to speak to why that tagline. So whatever I say here will be my own view of what might have uh, happened as a reason that might have gotten that tagline there. But that was the general tagline given to uh, Kaka and what he was doing at the time. Will you consider that tagline as appropriate? My Lord, come again. Would you consider that tagline as appropriate in relation to what you were doing in Ejra? My Lord, I wouldn't be able to tell at this point. <laughs> Erastus, I, I think that uh, ethical journalism requires two things. First, that you verify, you cross-check your sources and your information, and that that is then considered also fair, what you put out. Do you think that on this occasion, you, you were um, you know, aligned to these two um, tenets of journalism? My Lord, I appreciate uh, your concern a lot, uh, but to um, criticize my own uh, uh, something that I do not have too much control over at the time I was reporting uh, will be a bit uh, unfair on my uh, <laughs> but, but that's what you, I think it, this was your story, it was your byline and so whilst you were on the ground I'm sure that you know, you would have heard how this was being reported or how the commentary was going because I'm sure there's a crossover between you and also the, um, the anchor. And so I'm sure that in asking you questions to clarify on the field, the anchor would have mentioned these uh, hashtags and all these other things that you yourself say to us you had not verified on the field. So my question is, at the time, would it have been prudent to tell the anchor that you had not verified this and were not able to affirm so that the editor wasn't putting that hashtag there? My Lord, um, there are various divisions of our work. Mm. I was on a field reporting and normally we do not have uh, monitoring screens uh, to know what actually is going on on the other end of the film. So with the chaos and everything being on the field in such an environment, uh, my Lord, it, it will not even occur to you to go and watch television and see what, what is being done out there. So I wouldn't see it. 
Okay. And and so it will be on my blind side. Okay. But there are people who deal with the slacks that roll on the TV, the captions, and then there are editors who deal with other things. Mine was to be on the field and be reporting. Okay. Erastus, just one quick question about the um, clip that we saw. I think when you testified, you mentioned that uh, at some point the military had started to fire into they had changed their angle. They, they had first fired into the air. They had lowered and had started to fire kind of into the crowd. But in the um, clip that I saw, the person who was firing, as you uh, described, that they had kneeled down, were firing into the crowd, seemed to me to be firing at you know, an angle to the water cannons. Can you perhaps play that? My, my Lord, that? Um, yeah. there are various scenes of the firing. Yeah. At a point, you could see one of the men kneel and then fire. Yes, I think but he, not knelt, into he the... knelt in about two different directions. He knelt and faced this way, and then at a point, he knelt and faced that way. And uh, there are a series of firing uh, angles that we recorded and in fact if uh, my lord will ask them to play the original videos that we've given you you will see what i'm talking about so they, they, they fired from both angles and different ranges i suppose my final question would be that you're, you say you're a documentary producer and that you also do field reporting is it true that um, camera angles taken from different um, elevations could give different um, um, depictions of what is actually happening. Yes, my lord, um, it's possible. If you take from the back and you zoom in, uh, in terms of distance, it will look very close. But if you were to zoom out, as the cameraman was trying to do, you could actually see that the distance would be different from, and if you take it from a different angle, area views, you will get a totally different uh, picture. So of it what could is well happening. be that this person was squatting and not necessarily kneeling down, for example, that the military man who you describe as kneeling down and firing shots, is it possible that in the camera from the angle that you were taking it, that they were perhaps squatting or in a different posture? My lord, it will be a choice of description, uh, but I think the videos put it clearly, what the uh, soldier was doing. I, I saw it as uh, uh, kneeling and at a shooting position. Uh, the description might not be as another military man or somebody with a security background might describe it. Okay. Rastus. Erastus. Yes, my lord. I admire your bravery. I'm repeating that. Thank you. Uh, are you happy doing this job? My lord, uh, my wife tells me to quit, but <laughs> I like the job. You like the job. It's a good job, and you've done a good job. But you know, what you're doing, or what we want from you, is to help the committee come out with concrete uh, outcomes and recommendations. That's why all these questions are coming to you. Uh, it's not, you mentioned that something is unfair. It's an opinion we wanted from you. And I'm going to repeat that because you didn't answer that question. It's an opinion to help us make a report. My questions will be around what we need to do as a country. In the first place, you said this is not the first time you are covering these. We see these on films in Afghanistan and whatnot and whatnot. And you are doing almost the same thing here. Are you sure at times these things cannot escalate other ones ahead? We don't know when. We're talking about your job. The chairman mentioned the hashtag. It's not because he hates any other persons in that group. But to link Kaka's death to this and the misrepresentation and the misapplication. Don't you think if I, as a member of the commission, even start talking about something, somebody can also link it, 
that reverberates and brings about other cascading, or that reverberates and gives a cascading effect, has the media done well in this? And they jeopardize your job. Has the media done well? My Lord, uh, the... I am trying not to speak to that because being on the field is a different ball game altogether with being in the studio and being in charge of captions and slugs. So these things will be happening on my blind side and I wouldn't have much information as to the decision, the editorial decision to go that way. So perhaps somebody above my pay grade will be able to sorry, explain. Sorry, be, sorry to be rude. I want your opinion to help the committee because we are also going to give opinions. In my field, I know that the media has caused more wars than wars themselves. And you know it as a media man. That's what I'm asking. Don't you think such reportage, you didn't tell them, you didn't put the hashtag there. And I'm saying, don't you think the media is also to blame somehow for some of the things that happen and happen? My Lord, if there is an established link between the tag of Kakaya's activities and subsequent death to um, the hashtag fix the country campaign, then I would, uh, if the media has not been able to establish that indeed he was a member, then I would say that yes, uh, it, it might have led to this. And I will not hold brief for the media. Yes, the actions and inactions of the media can uh, cause trouble, and we've seen it in other uh, countries. That's, and, all I, that's all I want. And for our country, we need to be very careful. What shows that there is also a link between the hashtag and his death? Nothing. In fact, nothing. And yes. myself, I have not seen Just give me your opinion again. It's an opinion. The facts you are giving us will be watching. What will be your recommendation to the Commission on hooliganism, the youth, and what you saw there in Nigeria? Was it called for? And the media, the security agencies handling of the whole thing. Thank you. My Lord, the carrying of implements like swords and uh, jackknives and sticks to me was all warranted. It was not in the rightful place for a demonstration. As for the anger they felt, that I think is genuine looking from their anger because then when I look into the life of Kaka, I visited some of the places that he was trying to project. This is somebody who felt that promises have not been fulfilled and uh, there is a lot to be done for the people. He feels bad about it. He wants to project it uh, to get a certain um, reaction from government. I think he must be able to do that. and and and. Uh, do that peacefully without being uh, tormented or beaten. But for whether that is also the reason why the people attacked him is also another uh, matter to uh, look at. So I think just as the uh, president has commissioned your office, it will be in line to get to the bottom of it. Why was he attacked really? Do all these factors feed in to why he was attacked? then we'll be able to really understand the anger of the people, whether it was justified. And then to talk about the um, use of um, force, in quotes, by the military. I have seen some demonstrations that are also very, very dangerous, calmed without using any weapon at all. And I think that with what happened at um, Techiman South, the same thing. And that is what got me thinking that we should rise to higher ground because then it's the same thing you saw men firing into the air first and then firing into the crowd 
and people started falling. The same thing repeated itself in, in this particular scenario. And I think that if we train the retrain or reorient the military or get proper riot control security personnel to handle these things, we won't have some of these things in the future. Erasmus, uh, let me find out from you the officers who knelt down aimed into the crowd. Can you assist the committee to be able to identify them? You know, we know that most military men have their name on their uniform. I don't know whether your cameraman was able to capture uh, the identity of this Officers. My Lord, um, I'm sorry, but we can't. And this is the reason why. Because the situation was so fluid. Uh, we were, we ourselves at the point were running for our lives. Even where we were filming the thing from, you could hear the sound of bullets all around you. So we were fearing for our lives. So the idea was not to focus directly on specific details of, of things. And the distance, too, will not allow us to see name tags, for example. And these men were wearing uh, the military hats to cover their faces. So it's not really clear, unless we have experts to look into the video and to see whether they can really identify them. Thank you. Can you tell us the length of the original on that video. Is that many hours? My Lord, we, at a point we paused in between, and so you have separate uh, videos, but if you piece them together, that's how we do our job. Uh, we piece them together, you have one long video. I think it will be very long, because uh, it's, it's quite a lot of videos. If we say we are watching it, uh, it will be more than three hours. Yes, uh, can you assist us regarding the water cannon, the police uh, water cannon? Yes, my lord. Were you in town when it started entering Ejura? Were you then in Ejura town? Uh, my lord, Keep looking at the time. Mm. My lord, I didn't get the question well. Were you in Ejura before the police water cannon entered? Ejura. My Lord, no. I, I wasn't in Ejura when the... I learned that um, the water cannon went to the burial, uh, the cemetery. But we were not there at the time. Thank you very much. Since uh, the original video will take about three hours or more, we wouldn't like you to sit here uh, for it to be played. We will also play it later and have a look. If there is a need for us to call you back to, to help us understand it better, we will do so. And we hope that uh, when we call on you, you find time to come and assist us. We are very thankful to you. Thank you very much, my Lord. Let's charge the word. We are informed the next witness couldn't make it today, so the committee stands adjourned to tomorrow, 10 o'clock. We are grateful to the media for your attendance.
Well, a very good afternoon to you wherever you are following our coverage of day one of the EJRA probe following a directive by the president. A three-member committee chaired by Justice of the Court of Appeal, Justice George Kinsley Cumson, began sitting today with its first witness, the Ashanti Regional Minister, appearing and giving testimony. Uh, he gave accounts of events leading to the disturbances in Ejura on the 29th of June. And the second witness is what you've just seen, our own Erastus Asari Donko, who led our team in Ejura to cover extensively uh, what would be really the only evidence of what had happened in Ejura. Raymond and uh, Winston are here to give us a wrap of what we have heard so far. Guys? So it's been interesting. Um, there are, three, there are a few things everybody should know about what the regional minister said. One, that yes, he deployed the security that went to Idra, to the military specifically. Two, that his deployment was in the thick of affairs because he was in a hurry to get the problem solved. So some procedures established in the, even the securities and intelligence act might not have been followed. He also moved on to say that he has used that mode of deploying police, military together, and the collaboration between those two institutions for a very long time. And the deployment of that team precedes him. That's minister, he saw how Operation Cow Lake, which dealt with the Fulani situation, had way back in the 90s still been used before him. And he thought it was a very uh, wonderful way of dealing with the problem. Again, he moved on to now talk about what he felt was the problem on the ground. He said this was a flashpoint or hotspot which has been named consistently by the security institutions during elections, where violent situations can erupt consistently. He was minded by that. And the main reason why he had to ask the military to come on board was because the day before the 29th, there was an attack on a police station. And the policemen there were attacked by people in the constituency, the district, uh, municipality, specifically the town, for that matter. So those were the main things he said. Then he sought to provide a, a video, I'm sure most of you have seen this video, the video where the police vehicle, the, the one that sprays water, hot water mostly, on people to disperse crowd, the car control vehicle was somewhat uh, in the direction that the people were following. Yes, that was what he sought to show. And to him, that was evidence that the people first attacked the police. And because they had attacked the police, the shooting that happened later on, which is currently on the scene, that the military coming back on the streets and doing what they did was in response to that particular attack, i.e. the security agency on the ground were first provoked before they responded. That is the evidence. Then they questioned him about whether or not they could get the one who recorded it so that they could verify the authenticity of this particular uh, evidence. Then he finally gave the indication that, well, I mean, uh, I cannot like journalists will say, review my source because it will jeopardize the person's security. In fact, he would want to say that it will make it difficult for you to do his job as a regional minister running the security in that particular region when he reviews out identity. Then he moved into a middle line saying, I'll talk to the person. If he's willing to come out and help you out on your job, we'll do so. When they offered to do in-camera sittings, that is when they also actually give the third vision. So in a sum, he finally told everybody there that there is no way I am going to let you have access to the gentleman who recorded that video. And that's where he ended it. Then Erastus came in to actually give us a vivid explanation of what has happened on the day. Let's not forget that it was this network that brought you what nobody had seen on the ground. We had arrived from the beginning, very early in the morning. And as of the time that Joy News Interactive was on, that was when we started bringing you the live videos that you are currently even seeing on your TV. So Erastus went through it methodically, time conscious, and in a very chronological manner. Then they had some questions and clarifications on how, what they call it, the process had gone through and who was there. Some of the questions I, I really felt were not meant for him anyway. Exactly. But what could you have said? Well, for example, me, if I'm reporting on the ground with you, and let's say Jata is my cameraman. You make a very big mistake asking me about camera lens and direction and all of those things. <laughs> I, I, I won't lie to you. As long as I've done this job, I have absolutely no idea about those things. But he did a wonderful job with the responses too. Uh, I mean, composure, train of thought. The, it, it, was, it was a yeah. good 
it was a good display of competence on the ground, mm. which matched exactly his mastery the day that the incident happened. It's interesting, Winston, uh, that they actually had the raw visuals, what they were asking for. And I think at a point, the chairman indicated that even if it was two hours long, they were willing to watch it. But we didn't see them play that raw visual. What we saw them do was to play, uh, as we covered it, what we put out on YouTube. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if the suggestion was given that they were going to go back to watch the, real, the raw well, visuals. Well, the chairman had indicated that they wanted to watch the raw visuals. And indeed, he had asked that, why didn't they play the raw visuals? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and that's why they asked, they asked us how long that was. And he indicated that, you know, the... If you piece everything together, it was going to be about uh, three hours. But you know, on but it wasn't too late to play. It wasn't too late to play. play. I mean, it wasn't too late to play. But on on YouTube, actually, because on the day we picked it live mm -hmm. uh, during the journeys interactive. So if you went on to YouTube, for instance, you would see how it unfolded. But of course, if you wanted the full video, since they said they wanted it raw, just like that, yeah. Erastus had provided it. But that would actually lead me to a few concerns. Yeah, ju just to say, because, you know, if you see what they played, at some point you see the interactive yes. logo on it, because yes. it was in between a program. And you can't put a shaky visual on air. Exactly. So you, the director had to manage it. So exactly. you would not appreciate exactly what they had at the time. Go on, Winston. Yes, and, and so, I mean, one of the, some of the few things, the concerns I had with all of this, well, they're doing their job, but I, I mean, at a point, I, 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 I was asking myself whether uh, this is really a probe about what led into the shooting investigations, uh, about what led into the shootings and what led into the death of two persons or how it was reported. Because, look, and Rastas answered very well that the slugs were done in Accra. Those slugs were Mavi and Raymond, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does not, I mean, as much as it will provide information on what is happening, the pictures tell a very, very clear picture. And I'd explain. I'd explain from a concept that I've, I mean, I've come to love, the concept of witness. I say, through the media, I can be a witness in the office of the president. Why? Because I would see what the president has done, as though I were there. Now, through these footages, I mean, through this footage, I saw what was happening at Edra live, okay? Through this footage, I could see a military man aiming and shooting. Through this footage, I could see a man shot and being carried to the hospital. All these things are not in doubt. The whole conversation about fix the country and whether he would believe that, you know, the media could actually uh, sometimes say things that could lead countries into wars, I feel, I feel, if you ask me, I feel it was not very necessary at this point. Fix the country as an activity, okay, as an activity. So a lot of people jump into it. And mind you, the Journeys Interactive was talking about hashtags, Raymond. We had that conversation earlier. Yeah. Hashtags, and the hashtag fix the country had even come up, for instance. So I think the committee should focus on, I mean, the, uh, a lot of the issues that led to it. The coverage on the day is the footage you have. Well, very interesting. Uh, I'm, and, and again, we're not sure if uh, they're going to spend time looking at the, the, the videos uh, presented from us to them uh, that will help. But let's get the should. focus of they the, of the committee again. Because they say, and, and, and to be very honest with you, the chairman says, no matter how long it is, we are willing to watch. And I was expecting him to watch. And yes, your journey. Uh, it, I was expecting him to watch. A bit weird for to me, all of us to watch and see, and for all of us because to Because he had questioned you know, the, yes. the IT guy why they were not watching the exactly. raw f visuals instead of what was on YouTube, uh, you know, that, that we had put there. Uh, by the way, uh, our job, and that, that was my understanding, this is a committee again, uh, uh, Raymond, we're trying to distinguish between the Commission of Inquiry and, uh, and this committee that was set up by the Interior Minister, really, uh, because that's the appointing authority, even though there was a directive from the President for the Minister to investigate yeah. uh, and bring to bear what happened on that day, leading to the death of these two gentlemen. Uh, I was just you know, going to say that people are to volunteer to appear, uh, you know, to give testimony, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw with 
the regional minister, the chairman of the regional security council, where he provided a video, there was a plea to him to make the person, the source of the video available mm -hmm. so they could interrogate what yeah. he had shot and see if there was anything more they could learn from it. I, I wonder you know, what this would do, especially when they've opened the doors for people to volunteer and appear. If it's becoming more like you know, we're questioning or we're interrogating things beyond you, would it give, essentially, I'm just asking, would this give what we've seen happen to Erastus, particularly with the issue of the slag, where he had no control over, would it give people the opportunity, oh, I can appear and tell them whatever it is that I have, without being pinned to something that I may not necessarily know? It's also possible that probably we can appreciate that the panel might not have a proper appreciation of journalism. We cannot dismiss that. It might be that to them, so far as you are a journalist, so far as you are practicing, so far as you are in the field, and it happens to us all the time, you might be at home sleeping and somebody will call you and say, why is this particular thing on TV? As yeah. if by some design, you are qualified and competent to determine everything in the station. Regardless of you being a middling or a, just an agent or anybody without the authority to make any change. So it's understandable that, well, that they may ask questions which will sound to the journalist, why is this my question anyway? But I hope that by this, they will not lose focus of the, 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 the real reasons they are there. And to me, it is important. I also hope that the, the entire exercise does not become like what we've done in times past, where we just put together wonderful reports and it doesn't go anywhere. But more importantly, the committee's work cannot be seen, should not be seen, cannot appear to lean towards a posturing that suggests that we, are, we have a set of facts we are interested in and that's only what we will take. Because you discourage an impartial look at your work. You discourage people from going on uh, and provided the information you match, match did it for it. There is an old, what do you call it, saying from Lord Mera when he came to a similar committee's work. And he talks about the fact that it is such committees that does fact finding, impartial, dispassionate, and with the ultimate truth at heart. It is the hope that. All of this questioning is supposed to arrive at that particular answer and not necessarily skew anything in any direction or send signals to people that there's an agenda in building the quest to do something different. It will be disappointing. Already, there are many people in this republic who are convinced committees of this kind end up doing nothing. Their reports become a completely useless product and we end up wasting resources on them. It is by their conduct and their actions, and perhaps when they finish their report, that we will get to know whether or not this is a different committee whose work would influence policy and get the right action done in this country. Because ultimately, it's about the security of the state. Government's ultimate responsibility, first and foremost, is to guarantee the people of this land the best of security. Mm. And that is why I think we can all look at this as, well, they are all asking questions to get a better appreciation of the issues and get to a point where we can all say that we have come to some conclusions and we understand what really happened and the circumstances surrounding the act on the 29th, which was a very terrible day in our history. Um, just to end with you, Winston, uh, of course, we know that Ibrahim Mohammed, uh, there's an investigation ongoing, mm. which is different from this, but I get a bit, a bit confused because we see the committee getting into matters of Ibrahim Mohammed. What do we know is happening right now? Is that investigation separate from the work of this committee? Well, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're going to investigate the Adra circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, the, I mean, all the uh, issues, you certainly would investigate Mohammed also because his death led to all of this. And so it will be very important to understand, for instance, um, following his death, uh, what happened? Did the people, for instance, suspect that a lot was not being done, hence the decision to get onto the street? What do they even believe may have led to his death? These are very important things you need to know. 
uh, to have a better appreciation of why they went onto the streets, uh, you know, on 29th, uh, you know, June. Because they had said earlier that uh, they believed that uh, their brother was killed. They believed that, and they had accused the uh, bodyguards of the MCE, which the MCE denies. And so all these things would have to be found out. And it's very important that committee goes into it. And you, uh, you, you, you asked a question earlier about, um, you know, uh, volunteers being allowed to come in there. I'm, I'm sure the committee would vet these persons. Not everybody coming out to say, I want to speak, will be put on uh, there to speak. They would, they, they would have to vet them and decide whether they bring them to come and uh, address the committee. I, I mean, either, otherwise, you'd have everybody lining up to say, I want to say something. Because they don't have a definite time. Exactly. And they, they must come to another point. Yes, they must come to another point. So you have to vet the statement. They must, they must write statements, you vet them, and decide that uh, you would want to uh, further, in, you, you would want to interrogate these statements, and then you bring them to the committee. Well, guys, uh, I guess we have to continue this tomorrow, because the committee was set 10 a.m. That's the advertised time. When it happens, of course, we will be here. But we thank you for your company today. For myself, Mama Vio Swabwaji, Winston Amwa, and Raymond Aqua. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll meet, but certainly stay with Join News at 3 p.m. We'll bring you polls, updates on all the running stories. Thank you for your time.